Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name's Emily and I'm a writer and if you didn't guess that already from my channel name then sorry to break it to you, just not that smart. So this is the first video of a series of videos looking at book reviews and some of the books I've read and just some of my opinions on them really. Um, if you have any ideas or any suggestions of what you think I should read or what you think I should review, put them in the comments section below, just down there, and if you want to ask me any questions, put them in there as well. I feel like before I start I have to apologise for my first YouTube video, the one before this. Um, it's very cringy, it's very awful. I was kind of experimenting with how bad I could make my first introductory video and I think I've kind of topped myself on the cringe scale. So I am very, very sorry. I promise I will not use Comic Sans or stock explosions ever again. Well today I'm going to be talking to you about this book here. Um, you may not be able to see it as it's a very white book that doesn't seem to be working too well on my camera. It's called The Incest Diary. Um, the title itself can put people off massively and I'm sure many, of people, many people that look at the word incest they'll go, oh my gosh, I don't want to touch that. And that's for good reason. This book is not for the faint hearted. It's probably one of the most triggering books I've read. Um, but saying that, it was probably one of the most enjoyable reads. Not for its triggering nature, of course. So it's really short. I think it's about 200 pages coming up just under a novella. So it is, drum roll please, 132 pages. That would make it a novella, yes, as you can see, it's very thin. But it comes in this lovely hardback um, cover with a paper leaf, uh, matte finish. And it's just a really nice book to have. It fits into your bag really nicely. It's published by Bloomsbury, which, um, for those who don't know, also published Harry Potter, which was one of the issues why this book was very controversial, which we'll be going on to in a bit later. Now, this book is written by an anonymous writer who, as we can develop from the book, is American. I think they're born um, somewhere south. I could be wrong. I read this book last year when it came out in 2017. It was released in July and I remember seeing it on Vice was the first time I saw it and the article explained why this book was so important but why not many people enjoy reading it. So this book is an autobiographical account of this anonymous writer's experiences of having sex with her father and the sexual abuse over her life. Um, I won't read any specific phrases out to you and I won't go into too much detail about what she talks about as she does not hold any bars at all. It is very graphic, it's very triggering as I've said, um, and it's just very hard hitting. There's really explicit sexual scenes, so if you are going to read this book and it does interest you, I'm just going to warn you now, um, there were many times I had to put the book down and just go, whew, can't deal with that right now, I just can't, because it's just, it's just too much, it's too visceral. But that, as I said before, doesn't make it any less readable. So the whole book develops how she grew up from such a young age dealing with her father's sexual abuse. It starts from the age of four and then she then develops into how their relationship progressed and how she felt as a victim and then how's that, how that has affected her later life being with her current partner. Um, it's not a very happy book, it's very very bleak, even the ending's bleak. The ending, um, I'm going to spoil this now, doesn't really resolve anything. Um, it ends with her having sexual intercourse with her partner, it's very very rough, and it's basically her drifting out of her body, as many victims have explained, as a form of coping mechanism. And there doesn't seem to be much hope for the author, we don't really know where her life goes, we don't know whether she breaks out of this cycle of abuse and it's really hard hitting, it's, 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 it's very sad but I feel like in current times with the Me Too movement um, it's very very important, such, such an important book to read um, and I feel like this resonates with a lot of audiences who have had sexual abuse and especially with family members. So I'm going to read to you the blurb um, which goes, in the fairy tales about father-daughter incest, the girl without hands, a thousand furs, the original Cinderella, the stories of Saint Dimphna, I'm gonna go with that, patron saint of incest survivors, the daughters are all as you would expect them to be, horrified by their father's sexual advances, they do everything in their power to escape, but I didn't, a little child can't escape, and later when I could, it was too late. Um, so she already references other tales of incest 
and it's very interesting that she does that and she does that throughout the book as well how there's this idea of either the victim being completely horrified and breaking free and being free and being a survivor um, or in some actually being um, glorified or romanticized um, but as she actually says it's not the case for her and even though she could later on in her life she couldn't escape from what her father had done to her and what's really interesting with this book most of all is even though she's a victim she doesn't play the role as a victim she explains very coldly very apathetically what has happened to her in the most clinical terms but never seems to dwell on it in from an emotional aspect so she never goes oh i'm really sad this happened to me it's, this is what happened moving on and like i said i think that's really really important with the me too movement because it's dealing with that mo that emotional problems through a very, very clinical way so other people can realize what the hell's gone on and as well to bring up the awareness um and i feel like with many things when you want to create awareness for problems you get caught up in your own emotions and that stops you from relaying the honest truth which this anonymous writer does entirely so the inside blurb there's a little bit on the leaf and i'll read that to you rather than actually reading some of the book because as i said it's very hard hitting so, throughout her childhood and adolescence, the anonymous author of The Incest Diary was raped by her father. Beneath a veneer of normal family life, she grew up with this all-encompassing secret. Her sexual relationship with her father lasted on and off into her 20s, which I think, um, as I said, it starts from four years old. And I don't think she stopped sleeping with her dad until like the 20, 21st, 22nd birthday. That's such a long time and you end up seeing most of what goes on and some of it such as when she gets rushed into hospital because of what her father's done is absolutely horrific it's heartbreaking um, and it's really interesting when she talks about how it affects her family life and she develops later on very briefly not as much as you would expect how her family react to this secret when they find out her auntie suffered from similar issues and yet her auntie was in denial and told her to just go don't do it just just don't tell anyone which is really interesting and it's that denial and victim blaming perhaps that once again still happens today and it's not an isolated incident this happens all over the world and as i said that is why this book is so so important to read if you can stomach it definitely read it it formed her world and it formed her deepest fears and desires even after she broke away, even as she grew into an independent and adventurous young woman, she continued to seek out new versions of the violence, submission and secrecy she had struggled to leave behind. And that leads on to the um, final act of the book where she talks about her current relationship and how that is really twisted, it's really hardcore. It's very normal and quite frequent for sexual abuse survivors to actually still be into hardcore submissive role plays as a form of reclamation you can see it a lot in articles all over the internet and i myself hashtag me too can speak from similar experiences as well it's kind of a way to deal with it it's a coping mechanism but in this book it never becomes that which is really interesting she stays submissive for her whole life she stays broken for her whole life and she doesn't seem to ever reclaim this independent and empowerment in this graphic and harrowing memoir they're using the word graphic very lightly it is very graphic warning you again the author revisits her early traumas and their aftermath not from a clinical distance but from deep within to explore the ways in which her father's abuse shaped her and still does as a matter of psychic survival she became both a sexual object and a detached observer this is a really interesting point um and that explains the the clinical nature i was talking to you about and the very ap apathetical I'm saying this, it's probably not a word, is it? If it's not, it is now. From this apathetical standpoint. And it's really interesting to see how that develops over the book. Um, in many cases, especially the end of the book, she talks about leaving her body as a form of coping me mechanism and watching these horrific events take place as if it's like a movie, as if it's a horror movie, a nightmare going up before her. And the way that she deals with that in a very numb and detached, cold, observer-like way um, is what many survivors and victims do. Um, and that's how she can write this book. Um, I would really like to know where she is now and if she's okay, if she's broken this cycle. Part of me 
because of the end of this book worries that she hasn't um so if she's out there you know kudos to you i think you're absolutely incredible and very strong and if anyone feels that they can do something like this and share their experiences then i think you deserve a thousand gold medals you really do. I don't know how old she is when she writes this book. As I said, it was published last year. She probably wrote it 2010, took a few years to publish it, found, found Bloomsbury, that's all I can assume. But I think she's like late 40s, early 50s. She must be quite old to have the strength to write this, I think. With lyrical concision in vignettes of almost unbearable intensity, that's very true. This writer tells a story that is shocking, but that but that will ring true to many other survivors of abuse. It has never been faced so directly on the page, and that is 100% true. It is so important for, for victims of abuse. It really, really is. And this is why I think this book is for our generation. It's for now, because even though many of the things that she talks about are quite old, I think in the 60s, 80s to the 90s, and even though it was published last year, before the Me Too movement, it is still relevant and I think it always will be because these things sadly will always happen um, because humans suck. And we need more things like this to help each other and to raise awareness of this. Um, so I would really recommend you, you read this. Um, if you can stomach it, don't force yourself to because it is very hard and some of the stuff that she writes are very graphic. And that leads on to what I was saying earlier to Bloomsbury Publishing and the controversy around that. Bloomsbury Publishing, for those who don't know, was actually the publisher of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, which many people absolutely love. I personally don't, but it's, it's renowned globally. People absolutely adore it, and it is a children's book. So why would Bloomsbury, who publish a children's book, publish something like this? And many people judged Bloomsbury and judged the publishers and the editors and many people actually boycotted the book because of that, thinking it just wasn't suitable and wasn't appropriate at all. However, I really salute Bloomsbury for taking that plunge, I really do. They didn't have to publish this, they didn't have to at all and I'm really surprised they did. You know, to be a children's book uh, publisher who publishes one of perhaps the most popular children's book in the whole entire world to touch something that really graphically outlines sexual abuse at a really young age, paedophilia, incest, it is horrific. I don't know why they touched it but I'm so so glad they did because as I said this book needs to be published, it needs to be read and it needs to be shared. Um, when it came out there was a, it was a bit of a boom, a bit of an uproar, controversy, con controversy again as to why it's being published, how dare they, but many people didn't get past the incest part of the title, many people couldn't get past the, the off-putting book itself, but they didn't want to read it, and I can see why, I completely understand that, but, you know, don't judge a book by its cover or its title in this um, scenario. So that was really interesting to see the whole uproar about the book itself, but not many people have actually really reviewed it, and not really analysed it, not to the same extent that I feel like I am doing now. There's been a few people saying, oh yeah, it's 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 good, you need to read it, or, or it's horrific, but not really any in-depth reviews because not many people want to touch this book, not many people want to be associated with something that has incest in the title. Um, and that's completely fair enough, I understand that. However you need to, and I think in society we need to tackle these issues head on and we need to discuss them and we need to talk about them so we can give solidarity and support to other women and other men too. So if you read this book, please let me know your thoughts and opinions. Could you read it all the way through? Did it upset you? Did it resonate with you? Did it support you? And please put them in the comment section below. I personally found this book, although hard to read, I really personally enjoyed it. It's very short, it's very intense, but like I say, it's a novella. You can zip past it in a day. I did it in one sitting. Um, every now and then I did take a few, a few minutes to just try and take it all in and just be like, whoa, what is going on here? But I did zip right through it. It's very accessible writing, it's very simple. She doesn't use flowery language, she doesn't even use many adjectives, she says the concrete cold facts. And I think that's appropriate in this sort of topic. If she said anything else, such as 
like making it romanticized or glorified through the use of flowery language i would probably shut off because i don't think it's an it, i don't think it's appropriate it's just inappropriate for this sort of thing and like i said put your opinions in the comment section below subscribe for more book reviews i will be doing some tutorials and live sessions as well bits and bobs talking about writing techniques too and if you want to see anything else just like i said put it in the comment section below you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at EmilyTheWriter1, so be sure to follow me to find out more about me and just get in touch if you want to see anything else and find out who I am and who Emily the Writer really is. Take care everyone and see you soon. Bye.